What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Vontae the first, and yes, I am finally back with another video for Gotcha Kuta for all my little viewers that watch. You know, what I'm saying not, not a lot of people watch. It's a new series, so it's to be expected. But for the ones that watch, I want y'all to comment down below how y'all feel about the chapters and talk with me. You know, what I'm saying talk with me. Let me know how you guys feel because I don't really get a lot of comments when it comes to Gotcha Kuta. Now I know that you guys are out there because you guys are clicking on the video. So you know what I'm saying. So if you fuck with me. Comment down below. You feel me? The last chapter. Um, well, well, first, before I get into that, obviously, I didn't record my last two reactions to Gotcha Kucha because I had COVID during those weeks, so I wasn't really, um, you know, feeling good to even do it. But I read it off screen, and now I'm all caught up with chapter 23 today that I'm going to be reacting to today. Um, but yeah, last chapter, we had uh, got introduced to a healer that they have on the squad, and apparently, she's the only healer that they have at the Xander's HQ. She healed the boy Gris, so he's all good. Rudo's not really. Um, first he was upset and you know what I'm saying like he felt like he, could, he didn't protect them and stuff but he was shocked when he seen that he was alive and uh the healer name is Aisha so we got introduced to her so shout out to her for doing her thing and then eventually we fast forward a little bit in the chapter and we finally meet the boss which is interesting because I didn't think we we're going to meet him that early I thought it was going to take a while for us to meet him but as a black man shout out to all the black people in this manga you know what I'm saying hey Kai Udana you know what I'm saying? She she's really good when it comes to the diversity. I have seen black characters, like lighter skin characters, brown characters, all different shades and shit. And we're only 23 chapters into this series, and we already seen a lot of diversity. So shout out to her for that. Um, and uh, his name is uh, Corvus Allah or Al was it Alha Corvus? He seemed really cool. He seemed like he really solid, really down. You know what I'm saying? And he's the boss, the black man, the boss. You feel me? That's what's up. You feel me? But um, it explains why the reception this is black too. That's that's pretty dope, now. Nah. But um, yeah, pretty cool stuff right there. And um, he had mentioned about like a lady that was able to like help people, or, like travelers within the abyss, like I guess go to different areas and shit. And that she had mentioned that there's somebody that can like willingly go to the heavens and also down below to the abyss like on their own free will so that's interesting too i wonder if it has to do anything with rudo's parents because apparently his parents were like exiled i believe from um early on like chapter one or something like that so we'll see how this all works out but let me get into this chapter regardless let's get into this chapter chapter 23 of gachi akuta all right so we see zonka he's looking shocked at something that's interesting he sees like a little droplet or something in the hallway and he sees like did they, did they like create like another portal or something it's interesting the strong sense the way the strong sense that, that there is a monster okay so assuming we got some monster that's at the hq probably six hours ago hey hey rudo stop i said stop today's not the day to go see the woman of the forbidden zone yeah that boy rudo like i gotta under i gotta know man where's she at you want to you want to bring her up? I, I want to talk to her right now, man. Is she is she down here? Let me let me, you know what I'm saying. Let me talk to her. <laughs> she might have a clue on to, on how to return to the heavens. There's no way I'll stop. Yeah, I know, but this is not the time. Cut it out, shitty brat. You got to be prepared to go to such a dangerous place. She lives right in the middle of a forbidden zone. Are you going to go there without even gathering information, um, ascertaining your power? You want to die? Like, engine, like, what the f Are you stupid, Rudo? You want to die, nigga? Like, you better... I better... You know what I'm saying? You better get this information and be prepared. You know what I'm saying? No no, no bullshit. You feel me? Ascertaining my power. It's good that, you, uh, that you're able to, to use your powers properly, but you also need to awake... Uh, to, to be aware of the limits of, of, of its weaknesses and so on. Both you and I. Yeah. Of course. 100%. You coming with me? Obviously, going into a forbidden zone alone is suicide. You weren't, <laughs> you went there alone too. Besides, the janitors are exterminating aberrant beasts while collecting information about it, so it benefits us to enter to enter the forbidden zone as well. And we have to be on the lookout for vandals. The vandals. Now that you mention it, how can guys like those vandals be givers? Not all people are good, and not all people can take good care of things. Mm. And you see how he's holding this umbrella, the emphasis on his umbrella. I really want to know a lot of these people is like, why are these weapons, these objects, are there uh, jinkies? Like, what, why do they um, hold it to such a high pedestal? Like, why is it very important to them? And that's the part of the series that once we dive into it, that thing I'm going to like a lot about it. You feel me? And it's going to be really good, like, messages just for real life shit, too. Like, just to cherish anything that you got. Whether it's, you know, food, water, access to water, clothing, anything. It could be the littlest things and 
it can mean a lot to somebody. So that's the main thing I like about the series the most is probably that aspect. But I can't wait till we learn more about like, you know, why these jinkies are, you know, why these objects are very valuable to them. Um, but yeah, Rudo, I mean, you gotta understand though. Like, I mean, obviously, you know, people are gonna have these powers, whether they're good or bad, don't matter. It's like, I mean, I understand the question, but at the same time, you should kind of knew that. But Rudo, obviously, he's not really great socially. Like, he's not, he's a lot different from a lot of people. He's not, you could tell he has some kind of anxiety or he just doesn't like to talk to other people, you know, other than like Retgo. And now he's trying to open up to all these people as well, which is good, though. He, he needs it. Even those who look virtuous treat their things roughly. Hmm. And even those who look wicked have things that are important to them. Yeah, that's true. It's very true. You know what I'm saying? That's a really good thing to establish because now when we meet more antagonists with, throughout the series, we can understand that they have the same kind of, you know what I'm saying? The same kind of conviction or resolve and like just the same kind of importance, things that are important to them, just like the good guys. And that's something in the series that I feel that, that isn't established as well, even though we should already know these kind of things. But a lot of times the heroes are always the ones that seem like they treat things with a lot of care and the villains are more reckless. But in this series, it seems like they're trying to demonstrate to us that even the villains can seem care very careful about things and actually care about things in general. So I, I do like that aspect as well. Um, that's, that's pretty cool. It doesn't matter how good or bad you are, anyone can become a, a giver. But people who look down on givers call us defendants or d dependents. Hmm. Hmm. So there's people that think that the power of a giver is basically a power that's like they're dependent on something like an object right but compared to like you know whatever other powers that we have in the series i guess those people are i in, in the grand scheme of things are more gifted i guess you can say that's interesting i guess it looks weird for the public if you're obsessed with a thing somehow i just assume that bad people don't take uh care of their things i feel bad I like this. Like, it's really good that Rudo, like, you can tell when he learns things, he, like, really understands it after a while. It takes him a minute to understand the perspective, but he eventually understands it. And I, I like that about his character. And that's really, that's a really interesting conversation. This is, like, the second conversation between Injun and Rudo that I really appreciate. You know, like, Injun, obviously, there's more to his character that we don't know about because the way that his facial expressions look when he talks to Rudo is kind of like, you know what I'm saying? Like he seems a little somber sometimes and sometimes a little too stoic depending on what he's talking about. But uh, he's giving them information, which I do like a lot, you know, but it's interesting. You know, just Rudo's character, how he sees things and how he learns. I like that a lot. Yeah, but I won't let them get away with it either. Anyway, just chill out for today. I'm sure you've darted around quite a lot. Look at the art of that building. I like that. The room, the door with the graffiti. Even if he said chill out, how am I supposed to chill? I can't sleep very well. I want to go to dumps. I want to go dumpster diving. And you see that I love that about his character. Like we already established this like chapter one, right? But like for him to say something like that is wild. Like if you look at this panel, like what dumpster diving? Like what? Why is that like a hobby of yours? But like that really is a hobby of his. You can't really like criticize people for liking what they like or disliking what they dislike. It's just how it is. You know what I'm saying? You can debate with them about stuff but like ultimately i mean people like what they like that's just how it is you know and we know why he does too so you know that makes sense hey rudo i'll show you around at hq training room boom okay we got the training room in that okay okay the dining hall the bathroom everything look clean i love the art in this series i always say it. it's very versatile like Different sceneries are so different. The facial expressions change. The fighting styles and techniques that character have that characters have is like really good. Like, if only this can get animated by a really good studio. And I'm trying to think of a studio that would be really good at this. I feel like Bones can do a good job with this, but I also feel that like maybe um, like David Productions, because you know with Fire Force, like I could I could see that. You know what I'm saying? Because since uh, Kai Udena is very heavily inspired by uh, Okubo, so. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can really see David Production being a, doing a great job. They could do a great job of anything, but you know what I'm saying? It's a little shabby, but pretty much extensive, right? So much more than when I was above. What was your life like up there? That's a good question. Hey, good, nice. Actually, like, people socializing with him and asking him questions and just trying to understand him. I like that a lot. Like, don't neglect him. 
I like that these people aren't like bullshitting him or like being fucked up to him and stuff like like the typical cliche type thing where where somebody's like the rookie or the new recruit and people are like hella you know what i'm saying i mean him and zonka kind of have that relationship already but it's more back and forth more so than zonka just like talking shit to him you feel me so i like it going with red go to see the scenery finally tr uh finding trash getting bullies so there's there are bullies up there too don't worry there are bullies down here as well what kind of food did you eat stuff like bread soup how about sweets sweets yep sweets only rich people can eat sweets that's a really interesting thing right there we have them we have them <laughs> oh shit damn Let's see well i don't know what i'm looking i'm looking at like cookies or the macaroon things i see like jellos and cakes and candy and lollipops and a whole bunch of shit there are people down here called food vendors even uh, janitors buy regularly from them what you came here to eat sweets Yep, he's never eaten them before. I don't know a lot about up. Uh, not, I don't know a lot about up there, but sweets here are much more popular than drugs. Scary if you get hooked to it. I mean, yeah, it's true. Sugar is very much more addictive than drugs are a lot of times. Like than a lot of drugs, like cocaine and shit. Yeah, sugar. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy that he never even ate any sweets. I can't even imagine that. Imagine tasting sweets for the first time. That's you know what I'm saying? That's that's crazy. <laughs> so many food for the rich. The pollution is so bad down here that it's difficult to grow plants, but the food vendors have gathered givers who specialize in preparing food. Maybe they're the reason I've, uh, that we've got a better supplier of, of sweets down here. Try it. See, look at the art right there. I like that. He said, whoa, he said, this motherfucker, boy, sweet. This is what sweetness is, boy. This motherfucker hitting. This boy, this shit smacking. You look at his face. <laughs> What is this? So good. <laughs> what does it say? Oh, I, I gotta zoom in a little bit. Zoom, zoom, zoom. This shit not zooming in at all. I ain't gonna lie. You're nibbling more than I expected. So he's hooked. I've never tasted anything this good. I can't stop. Hey, hey, if you eat too much, you'll get fat. Oh. <laughs> you like, oh. And who the hell is this? He got a pacifier in his mouth? Is that his jinky? Is that, is that his, like, is that his weapon? Pacifier? What's with him? Could it be he's after the sweets? But I want to eat more. <laughs> Here, have this. He gave him a lollipop. He said, let me get that mug. What's wrong with this shitty brat? You're one to talk. Sorry. <laughs> and then now, hey, Ryu, what are you going to do about Rudo? I had no idea he turned out like that. Well, I'm glad he found something like that he likes. But still, emptying out the stocks of sweets, did, did he do something again? And then you see Zonka with the hallway shit. Oh, so that's what he was looking at. So that was literally, wow. So the, the, the beginning of the chapter is literally like a, a, a flash forward, fast forward of what was happening, was gonna happen later. <laughs> he was all fat and shit. Hey, hey, there's some weird outsider in here. Fuck you, man. That's hilarious. I love, I was just talking about how I love their relationship. That's just hilarious. <laughs> he like, what the fuck? He like, oh, he got fat. He like, who the hell is the outsider? What? The I love their relationship. It's really cool. Both of them being sarcastic to, to each other and stuff. And I like that Rudo, even though he's like very new to stuff and very like ignorant to a lot of stuff that's going on in this world, he still has like his own personality where he's able to actually interact with people. Like Zonka, he's really good at interacting with Zonka really well, even though they both clash a lot. And I like that. It's like a sibling type rivalry or like, you know what I'm saying? I like the pettiness of that. That's cool. But I really like this chapter. It was dope because we got to learn about Rudo um, a little more, you know, just how, well, not learn about him, but like learn how he interacts with people. Um, we got to see different rooms, training rooms, cafeteria and all that kind of stuff, the bathroom, different hallways and stuff. Ryu, she's really cool. You know, she was about it, just showing them everywhere around. Him eating sweets for the first time was really good. But I like this chapter. It was a good chapter. A good chapter to see characters personalities and stuff like that i like that a lot but um in the conversation earlier with engine and rudo about like you know how anybody can cherish anything whether they're a bad guy good guy whatever the case may be everybody has something that they like a lot or they value a lot so um that was an interesting thing to say because like i said earlier in a lot of series 
usually villains don't get that like luxury in terms of their characterization like they usually they usually just do shit because they have the power to just because they have the power to or they plan on doing something overruling something or whatever they have plans and stuff and all this stuff but ultimately we never see how much they care about certain things yes their actions kind of show that automatically but a lot of times you get the sense that the heroes are the only ones that we really get to see how much they care about things how much they care about saving people how much they cherish you know just anything in life but the villains are the ones that always seem destructive and this and that and the third but there's still things that they technically will hold dear to them and this series since we established it in this chapter is it's gonna be lit we can expect a whole bunch of like really like just great things about characters in general whether they're villains you know antagonists protagonists whatever the case may be and i like that a lot but yeah um that's pretty much all i got for this video so like i say in every video please stay safe stay healthy stay clean see you guys on the next video i got one piece coming out pretty soon as well today or tomorrow we'll see and then obviously you know my hero academia and uh jjk tomorrow as well so we got a lot you know within within these last two days or so so yeah see you guys on the next video Peace.